Eric Darling here with Darling Data. And in this video, we're going to talk about the utter pointlessness of using logical reads to tune queries. I know it's gonna be a difficult pill for some of you out there who just love logical reads to swallow, but uh, the thing is that uh, that's why God invented, uh, well, I don't know, pick a drink you like. It makes pills easier to swallow. Now, in my entire query tuning life, no one has ever come up to me and said, hey, thanks for getting logical reads down by 10% or 20%. You really, really made, really made a difference on that, doing fewer logical reads. It's amazing. Uh, most, of the, most of the things that people say, hey, good job on, are like, this query went from 30 seconds to one second because now end users don't have to spend 29 seconds of their day staring at a spinny wheel waiting for something to happen. And a lot of my early performance tuning, my earlier performance tuning days, uh, I, would, I would look at logical reads quite a bit <clears throat> before I really uh, realized how much they were leading me astray because I would find queries they were doing. Like, I would be like, let's look at logical reads. And I would find queries that were doing a lot of logical reads but happening very quickly because logical reads happen from memory. If you're already reading stuff from memory, it's going to be pretty fast. Physical reads are a different thing because that's actually going out to your crappy storage and uh, that's, that's no good either, right? Going out to storage, it's like the enemy of your, your database workload. We want to avoid storage as much as possible, especially in the cloud. Now, the, the other end of that, speaking of the cloud, is we have end users you can make happy by getting queries to go faster. And then we have the idiot suits at your company who got swindled into the, moving to the cloud because it was gonna be like cheap and easy and fast and reliable and secure. And uh, it, it, it kind of never was great at any of those things, right? The, the cloud is sort of like a pizza place that keeps raising its prices, except every time you order a pizza from them, the thing that shows up is a half eaten ham sandwich. But like, you know, the, the prices keep going up and you keep writing those checks. If you wanna spend less money on the cloud, Getting your queries to go faster is a great way to do that because then you have less sustained CPU usage, right? You don't have queries that take 30 seconds. You have queries that take one second. Even if they use more CPU to take one second, you'd rather, rather deal with that than anything else, right? Because that's a bit, that's not a bleh, right? And so you do that and not only do you make your end users happy, but you can also get, uh, you can, you know, like reduce cloud prices, sorry, reduce like your uh, cloud infrastructure spend less money on it. So let's look at this query just to sort of illustrate the point about how high logical reads are not necessarily the mark of a slow query. Right? Run this thing and it will do 10 million reads against the post table. Right, let's put some commas in there. There's, our, there's a comma at the end, but so Microsoft cares about grammar, but not about your sanity. And we can let's put a comma in here too. Look at that. So we do 10 million logical reads against the post table and 46,000 logical reads against the users table. But this query only takes 827 milliseconds to finish. You would you know, I know mentally it probably feels like 10 million logical reads. How can it only take 827 milliseconds? Because it's coming from memory. If your problem is stuff not being in memory, your problem is physical reads. Not logical reads. Logical reads is memory. Physical reads is out there, the wild blue yonder. Let's look at two queries back to back. <clears throat> now, uh, I'm going to drop clean buffers between these, not because it makes a gigantic, profound difference, but it nudges the numbers for both of them up just a little bit higher, which is, which is good, because you get to see things at their worst, right? So we talked about going out to disk. No one likes going out to disk. And let's look at how fast these ran. Let's look at some of the metrics in here. So if you were query tuning and you are only looking at uh, logical reads as a, the success metric for your query, uh, I tell you one of the first mistakes is making uh, one single metric that you can't rely on. Uh, your, your goal and your, your finish line for query tuning, it's a bad idea. So this first query, does about 7,000 logical reads from the users table and about 15,000 logical reads from the post table. And it takes about 880 milliseconds to finish. The second query, well, there are some work tables and stuff in there. 
uh, but there's not a lot of not too much action on those if you if you look closely. Uh, this does 15,000 logical reads here and 21,000 logical reads against the users table. If you compare that up here, right, that's like 3x the logical reads, but it's a faster query, right? It's 881 milliseconds versus 167 milliseconds. So reducing logical reads doesn't always make a query faster. Increasing logical reads doesn't always make a query slower. Cool. We've got that figured out. Now, let's look at a metric that would come into consideration, and that is physical reads. So I'm going to drop clean buffers, and I'm going to run this query, and then I'm going to drop clean buffers, and I'm going to run the second query. And the first query is going to run demonstrably slower than the second query. We have this first query, which does, and this is, this is, this is the real fun part, this query does 5 million logical reads, and the second query does 5.1 million logical reads. But look at the difference in CPU and elapsed time. All right? So we did, I don't know, like a, not quite a million, nearly a million more logical reads in the second query, but it finished a lot faster. That's because the first query had to go out to disk, and we did that many read-ahead reads. It's a lot of read-ahead. Hmm, had to physically go out to disk and bring stuff in. You may have caught glimpses of read-ahead re read -ahead reads in some of the other statistics I.O. output, but uh, this, is the, this is the good one to concentrate on. So you, you can have queries that do a high number of logical reads that happen quickly when they're from memory, but happen slowly when they're from disk. So if you want to concentrate on a metric, it's, it's, that involves reads, finding queries that routinely have to do a lot of physical reads is a good place because those are the ones that are most likely going to be missing some index in there that would make life better. Right? Maybe not 100% of the time, but a lot of the time, queries that routinely have to do a lot of physical reads usually have to scan some big old thing because they don't have a better index to use. So let's look at what that looks like in life. So if I were trying to diagnose uh, I.O. stuff on a server, I would of course start with my wonderful, lovely, talented store procedure SP pressure detector, and I would look at weight stats. And if, the, like, if these page I.O. underscore something something weights were a high percentage of uh, my server's uptime, then I would be concerned about physical reads, because that's, quer that's queries going to disk get stuff and bring it into SQL Server. Same, same deal with page IO latch at EX, right? So the SH weights are for reads, the EX weights are for writes. If I had to bring a lot of data from disk into memory all the time, I'd be concerning myself with physical reads, not logical reads. Now, let's, um, let's come over here into this window because this one is a little more interesting. And let's uh, throw 10 seconds on that. And let's just run this thing. Right, so I'm going to, as quick as I can, start that and then run that. And, oh wait, I ran the, ran the, ran the whole wrong thing. I got, I got all excited to highlight stuff and look what happened to me. We're just going to have to wait a few seconds there. Uh, there I was on a real roll. All right, so in the real results that I care about, which are down here, which are <laughs> SP pressure detector sampled for uh, some, some, some amount of time, uh, 10 seconds, as it says in the sample seconds column. Uh, in that 10 seconds, I spent 51 seconds waiting on page IO latch SH. Okay, I mean, fine. There was a little bit of a blooper reel moment there, but th this is the kind of stuff that I would pay attention to. So if I'm looking at the server uptime as a whole, and a lot of page IO latch underscore SH and or EX weights are happening, and I just don't have enough memory, I'm going to concern myself with queries that are doing physical reads, not logical reads. All right? So if you're looking at your server, and you say, wow, the server's been up for 100 hours, but it's done like, you know, like 50, 60, 70, 80, 90, or even more hours of page IO latch weights, and your problem is physical reads, not logical reads.
physically. Going to disk, that's slowing your queries down. So that's how, one way to look at stuff, right? So you can run SP pressure detector, look at everything, or you can you know, look at a sample of your workload and see just how much page IO latch is coming out of that, coming out of there. Now, if I look specifically at query store for, um, oh, get over here, you silly goose, for uh, this query, and I look at the metrics for it, we have a whole bunch of stuff in here about, uh, sorry, a little bit further, there we go. We have a whole bunch of stuff in here about average duration, total, total duration, last duration, and then these two columns are important. We have min duration and max duration. So what this would tell you is that sometimes this query runs for 713 milliseconds because data is already in memory, and sometimes this query runs for 8.2 seconds because data is not in memory, then we could come over and look at some other metrics. And this is where I think things are going to get even more interesting for you. So logical reads uh, never change. Right? Uh, in total, we've done 120,000. The last logical reads were 40,000. The min logical reads were 40,000. The max logical reads were 40,000. Okay, close enough in there, right? We're off by like 400, but not even 400 megs, like, I don't know, some small number of megs. <laughs> I don't want to do math in front of everyone. It makes me nervous. Uh, but the logical reads never change. What changes dramatically are the physical reads. So average 25,000 megs of physical reads, total 77,000. Last, 39,000. Min, zero. Max, 39. So for workloads that exhibit high amounts of page IO latch weights, which indicate you're not reading data from memory, you want to be looking at physical reads, not logical reads. Another couple other things I want to show you are if we look at Quickie Store in a couple different ways, like say, uh, this will show us up by average CPU. Uh, and we, this, the non-expert mode cuts a few of the columns out, so the results are a little more succinct. We can come and look at this stuff, and we can see stuff like average duration. And this is going to be, so this is ordered by average CPU, but if we put a few of these columns together, right, so there's that, and there's that, we kind of zoom in on this. There's not really a great correlation between how many logical reads you're doing and like how much other work you're doing. Like these two up here, like there's 300,000 megs of logical read difference between the two, but the one on the bottom is almost twice as fast as the one on the top, right? There's, we have 53 seconds versus 21 seconds. If you look in this bunch right here, this is a particularly interesting bunch. There's 13,000 uh, logical reads here, but the average duration is 15 seconds, right? So, like, this is just not a good indicator that, like, you're really blowing anything out of the water with logical reads. And then down here at the bottom, there are a few in here that are using almost as much uh, logical reads as the top, but, like, these numbers just don't come close to, like, these numbers, right? So there's a big gap in there. And that's why I stopped looking at logical reads because I kept finding queries that were generally fast, even if they did a lot. Another good way to look at query store data is by duration. Now this will order by average duration. So if we come over here and we look at, we line those columns up the same way again, right? We, we are doing, things are kind of all over the place. Average logical reads, 2679, average duration, 54 seconds, right? And not all of these numbers line up well between what's slow and what's doing a lot of logical reads. If you want to care about a read metric, care about physical reads. Look at those query plans. Figure out how you can do fewer physical reads, how you can make better use of the memory in your server, because that's a much, much better goal, right? Physical reads are the absolute devil. Logical reads are stuff that's already from memory. So please, when you're tuning queries, stop using logical reads as the sole metric for figuring out if a query tuning adventure was successful because that's not going to be what users feel.
right? You want to look at how long the query takes, how much CPU the query uses, how many physical reads the query is doing, because those are things that will not only make solving those problems will not only make your users happy, it'll make your servers happy. It'll maybe even make the idiot suits who are spending all of your bonus money on cloud infrastructure happy. So, uh, cool. All right, so this video is a twofer. You got a lot of good information. I got a good blooper reel moment for TikTok, I guess. That'll be fun. And maybe pause on the moment where my, I realize my face recognizes that I didn't have the one thing I wanted to run highlighted and I ran like six things. That's okay. It's, it's good to know that everyone hurts sometimes. Anyway, thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, including the, including the blooper reel <laughs> highlight, uh, I, would, I, I would adore, adore you for hitting the thumbs up button. Uh, if you like this sort of, sort of SQL Server content or you're just really into blooper moments, uh, you can subscribe to my channel because I guarantee you, um, well, not in every video, but every once in a while, there's a pretty good blooper moment. And uh, when I've been recording for like 10 minutes already, I'm probably not going to start over. So you're just going to watch me deal gracefully with it and graceful fail over <laughs> from the blooper reel. Anyway, uh, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed yourselves. I hope you learned something. I hope that you'll stop just looking at logical reads as success for making a query faster because there are many other things to consider in your environment. Uh, I hope that you will pay more attention to physical reads and pay more attention to queries that do a lot of physical reads because making those queries do fewer physical reads will make those queries go faster too. Um, I think that's it. Uh, yeah, I think we're good for today. All right, cool. Uh, I'm going to go do something else entirely that has nothing to do with computers. So you can, you can, you can leave it up to the imagination what that is. I hope you have. I hope you don't have too vivid of an of an imagination, because probably not going to be as vivid as you're imagining if it is. But anyway, uh, thank you for watching.